Outsourcing, um, as we know from the definition from, from Hove, um, is sort of basically the activity of a company or organization of outsourcing something that they've previously done themselves to, to a crowd, so um, anonymous or a large group of, uh, of people. Therefore, crowdsourcing can be used for, for a variety of things. We've already touched upon some of these things today. Um, I was mainly interested, I'm mainly interested in the innovation uh, part of crowdsourcing. But even within that, uh, you can see that it is being used from, yeah, for raising funds, uh, broadcast search, competitions, open calls, uh, sponsored user activities, so a whole variety of different things that you can facilitate with the use of crowdsourcing within the innovation context. Um, here, we are mainly interested in, in the search for external ideas and solutions. Um, so that is the focus uh, uh, of, of my PhD and that was, is also the focus of the paper. And here again, uh, it is interesting to see that even that uh, can be understood in very different ways and is used in very different ways. So for example, it can be used to crowdsource concrete solutions to R&D problems, um, but also yeah, asking consumers whether they have any idea for the next product, so more sort of new product development or what we see nowadays um, happening a lot uh, to find new ways how to tackle complex or even wicked problems, societal problems. So um, what you can see there, also the ideas and solutions, the scope um, is very different. Um, as I said, I mean, the crowdsourcing research is really what you can say, it's, we've seen papers sort of happening within the last uh, 10 years. and. Um, as, as you've seen, crowdsourcing being used for different things, even within the innovation uh, context. It is quite difficult uh, to sort of make sense of what do we actually know and what kind of um, uh, factors are important for what kind of outcome. And um, yeah, when you look at that, um, then you can see at the literature, in the literature, that um, there have been a range of factors uh, analyze that can influence the outcome. A lot is on motivation, for example, why on earth do people participate in these kind of activities, but also incentives, um, the role of task description, roles of crowd members, the duration of calls, um, many, many different uh, factors. Um, but the question sort of remains is, you know, how can you actually synthesize these kind of findings in a hopefully more meaningful way so that you then know for what kind of outcome, what factors are hopefully important. What makes it uh, also quite tricky uh, is that a lot of the crowdsourcing research, and that is also something that Gezi recently pointed out in a literature review, a lot of these studies are um, done on a specific sort of uh, case or on a specific data set. Uh, so the question is how much they are still case, uh, ca case specific or can they really be sort of looked upon in a broader picture. Um, then they use very different terminology. Um, so when you try to make sense out of it, uh, if you put in crowdsourcing, you will find some stuff, but a lot of it will not be relevant. And other stuff that might be relevant, you will not find because they basically don't use this, uh, this term for it. And yeah, uh, it's also published in a, in a wide range of uh, journals. Um, so it is quite uh, difficult to sort of make sense out of that. Um, due to these problems, uh, we've uh, been sort of thinking about how can we structure um, uh, the results of innovation crowdsourcing research in a, in a meaningful way and to synthesize it so that we know what factors are important, what, is, uh, what are also areas that still need addressing. Uh, we are obviously not the first one who do literature reviews on that. There are already some around. Quite often, like these ones, they only partially address innovation crowdsourcing, so they also look at the use of crowdsourcing for very simple tasks, uh, 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 where the, which are unrelated to, to um, innovation or knowledge production. Um, also, we see some crowdsourcing typologies. Again, here, quite a few of them are not really related to the innovation context, and therefore, not all of them are then so useful. Um, there are some first sort of frameworks and taxonomies, and interestingly, uh, when you look at them, they also sort of try to um, uh, look at it either from the perspective of the, of the um, complexity or the, the problem framing, that they say this is sort of something that we can use to, um, to pro provide a framework. 
um, or on the dependencies and the collaboration of the crowd. Uh, that has also been tried by, um, by some authors and um, some uh, even try to combine both the task structure and the dependencies. But again, here, these are cases that also, uh, or taxonomies that also then include the use of crowdsourcing for yeah, very simple uh, kind of tasks and not necessarily, uh, are not necessarily useful for uh, innovation. So that sort of leads to the, to the problem that uh, for the production of novel ideas and solutions, um, th these kind of uh, frameworks are yeah, only partially uh, helpful um, to, to, yeah, to use to synthesize uh, the outcome. We've been uh, trying to do it uh, in a way that we say, okay, we, uh, we actually use uh, some work that comes from uh, Richard Whitley, um, a sociologist who also developed that, I think, already in the 1980s. And uh, he mainly looked at um, knowledge production in the sciences, so a bit different area, but nevertheless, we find it uh, interesting and useful. And he argues that there are sort of the, the, the environments in which the production of new knowledge takes place uh, differs uh, usually on the level of task uncertainty and also mutual dependence. And this uh, we sort of yeah, translated is that we say, okay, depending on the nature and the formulation of the uh, task that is given to the crowd, so that is more the, the cognitive dimension, and then on the other hand, the dependencies within the crowd to accomplish the cast, task, the social dimension, um, uh, we can sort of, uh, that will probably also matter for, for the innovation crowdsourcing environment and we can structure um, the, the, the crowdsourcing space uh, along these uh, dimensions. Uh, so we did a bit of uh, translation work. As I said, the work from, uh, from Whitley is, 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 uh, is really highly sort of depending on, on, on knowledge production in the sciences. Uh, but uh, we feel that it works quite well also for the, for the crowdsourcing environment. Um, he differentiates between, on the one hand, task uncertainty, he calls it, um, and that he differentiates between technical task uncertainty. So we translated that into whether the contributors know what types of solution or input uh, the knowledge seeker is actually looking for. So do they relatively know, you know what, 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 uh, what the seeker is, um, uh, is aiming for? And also strategic, so do the contributors within the crowd know what are sort of the, 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 um, the most pressing issues that uh, this knowledge seeker has and therefore what kind of solutions uh, the knowledge seeker is likely to prefer? Whitley also uh, differentiates uh, then uh, the mutual dependence and that we also translated his uh, two dimensions to sort of uh, yeah, make it fit for, the, uh, for crowdsourcing. Um, he says on the one hand there is the functional uh, dependence, so really to what extent or does the crowd need to collaborate in order to come up with a solution that, is, uh, that the, crowd, uh, the knowledge seeker is looking for. Um, and also again strategic um, do, the, the, do the people in the crowd or the contributors, do they rely on uh, something sort of peer recognition? So do they need to promote the kind of work they are doing there in order to have a chance that the work that they are producing there, the solutions, the idea that they will be recognized and, and maybe even implemented by the, by the knowledge seeker? Um, that can be uh, the case, for example, um, uh, also we, we, we see key cases, uh, for example, Lego, they have a platform where when people put in their new product ideas, they need to raise a certain amount of positive votes, I think 1,000, at least within a fairly short period of time, in order to be at all considered, otherwise the ideas go straight into the bin. So. Um, that is sort of a way of uh, sort of understanding the strategic dependence. Yeah, this has uh, sort of led to this uh, uh, framework that we propose. Um, uh, again, uh, what is nice has four areas. <laughs> so, uh, um, and um, to sort of point out uh, a few things here, um, maybe give an example that uh, everybody knows uh, uh, what kind of activities are uh, in these areas. So on the one hand, we see here this area A, 
um, with a fairly low task uncertainty. I mean, there's never a no task uncertainty, but it's uh, comparatively lower and, and also uh, no mutual dependence. The contributors usually work uh, sort of by themselves and suggest ideas. These are, for example, these kind of uh, contests that you can find on platforms like uh, Innocentive, Six Sigma, uh, where usually companies put in R&D uh, um, competitions for, for yeah, an R&D problem that they have. They pretty much describe what the problem is, what kind of solutions they are looking for, and then the crowd works independently and suggests solutions, and uh, hopefully they sort of uh, choose one that they can then also uh, implement. Um, on the other hand, we also have here in IRB also um, uh, areas where the, the, the output is on, 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 on solutions that you can implement, but here the crowd is um, collaborating um, in, in some way uh, to produce this kind of uh, knowledge or these kind of solutions. Um, so what we see here in this area are a lot of these, um, yeah, they're called sort of different terms, but uh, sponsored uh, uh, open software communities um, or sponsored um, user communities. So usually you see here that people collaboratively work on, on, on providing a, or, or producing a new solution. Um, and they do that, yeah, in, in, a, in a group of people. Important, it's not completely open software, so it is always something that is outsourced from, from a company that either sponsors it or even gates it, uh, uh, these kind of activities. Then uh, on, the, on the more sort of uncertain uh, task level, um, we also differentiate between two uh, different uh, areas here. Uh, area C, broad generation of mainly conceptual ideas for new goods and services. That is these typical kind of platforms where a company uh, or a city asks their consumers or citizens, does anybody have any idea for a new product or a service or whatever? Yeah, please speak up. What do you want? Um, so it is very, very open. People then suggest all, all sorts of things. Um, some of it might be useful, some of it might not be useful. A lot of it is probably more conceptual. It needs to be first translated to actually be turned into a new product solution. Um, and they do that, yeah, everybody can do it uh, independently. Um, they do not need to uh, collaborate on that. And in area D, uh, that is a very interesting area now coming up. Um, we again see something that is still not, still sort of a more sort of problem-focused uh, knowledge production. So the likeliness of, of concrete solutions coming up uh, is also not very high. We see um, um, increasingly calls that try to tackle more societal uh, issues, for example, so how to fight uh, um, illiteracy in, in developing countries, how to fight the problem of children dying at birth, um, um, food shortage, water shortage, um, all sorts of things. So very often fairly wicked problems where they, it's not likely that there will be one solution, but the solution will be um, yeah, a way of negotiating and looking at it from different angles to hopefully provide new perspectives on it. And yeah, there is a lot of then interaction to develop a new understanding of these kind of issues and hopefully develop also new paths of solution. And there the, the dependency amongst the people is quite high because it actually builds out of this interaction process. So what we then did, using this uh, model, we, uh, we did a, um, a literature review of um, yeah, um, the sort of crowdsourcing literature, innovation crowdsourcing literature within the, the, the last um, uh, 10 years. Mainly, um, I will not sort of run through all the details uh, how we did it. Um, just um, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, um, due to the fact that uh, the use of the term crowdsourcing uh, for these kind of activities is so limited. Uh, we used a different approach um, and we used, um, we looked for 10 sort of uh, cornerstone papers um, that have sparked off a lot of discussion within the crowdsourcing um, uh, community and that are very widely cited um, uh, by relevant papers. And so we then looked at uh, the papers that cite these uh, sort of 10 cornerstone papers. And yeah, we. Uh, uh, then sort of run uh, uh, different ways of, uh, to, to reduce the amount that we will include. So at the end, we ended up with uh, 67 empirical papers uh, that are sort of relevant for this, and, uh, this kind of activity. 
Um, so when you look at it, uh, and then the findings, um, the, yeah, they, some who have already published before 2012, then uh, 2012 to 14, uh, there are 21 papers, and then we, we did the search in uh, July last year, so that was like then two years ago. Um, there are 29, and you will probably now see uh, still a growing amount, loads of papers coming out of uh, conference papers, so always with this bit of backlack uh, that, that will uh, even grow. Um, what is interesting, uh, when, you, when you look at it, uh, these papers mostly focus on successful projects. So I found only one that looked at, uh, at, at a failure and what the reasons are that crowdsourcing fails. Uh, so we, there seems to be a sort of uh, positive uh, selection bias or something in that um, to point out. Otherwise, um, they are also not evenly distributed um, amongst these fields. Uh, we see a strong focus on the papers on, in Area C. Um, which probably also has something to do with data availability. Um, the area D is one, and these papers are all very recent ones, only published within the last two years. Um, but that is, I think, an area that is really now sort of coming along and is interesting, because here you can argue that crowdsourcing can be a really interesting way, because it offers the opportunity to integrate the perspectives and knowledge of many people, um, on, on a topic that is, that is fairly, fairly open and you, you don't know uh, what the outcome uh, will be. Um, also, probably because the complexity of such a project sort of rises up to the right top-hand corner, uh, the ones at the left, I mean, the problems themselves might be very challenging, but the way to organize it is probably in a way more simple than um, dealing with, uh, yeah, with the um, uh, ones in area D. I would just like to point out a few things when you look at the areas, uh, sort of what is important, what makes crowdsourcing work. So for these kind of more innocentive kind of uh, problems, uh, R&D problems, we did find, yes, the precise formulation of the problem uh, objectives and constraints is very important to make it work. Intellectual property matters need to be clarified in this area beforehand, otherwise it's very likely that it will fail. Uh, adequate financial rewards are important, so adequate not only to match the scope of the problem, but also to match the, the, the financial resources of the knowledge seeker. So trying to get uh, for little money the crowd to help is, uh, is not very unlikely when you're a big multinational company. Um, you need people to, um, to involve, um, involve solvers that frequently put in effort um, uh, into these kind of um, uh, platforms, which has to do also with the fact that in these areas expertise and problem solving, uh, expertise and problem solving is very important um, compared uh, to, to other areas um, and very often the use of an intermediary like uh, Innocentive or Six Sigma or uh, so uh, makes sense. Uh, for the area where we see sort of the interdependent uh, production of knowledge, so people who work together like in these uh, uh, sponsored open uh, software communities, um, it's important to balance between the guidance that the knowledge seeker uh, gives there because they uh, want to control on one hand what the outcome is, but the people who contribute the work usually try to also do it because they want to gain something sort of for themselves out of it, learning, belonging to this kind of community, self-actualization. Um, so um, that is important to um, consider. Um, governance structures therefore need to respect the needs of the solver community. And it is also important that the knowledge seeker kind of involves in these activities so that maybe even employees from the knowledge seeker are involved in these communities and interact with the people to tear down the boundaries between the crowd and, uh, and the knowledge seeker. Yeah, needs to be modernizable, otherwise you can hardly uh, get many people involved and interaction tools are important. Okay, I just want to show the last two slides for the... Um, area C, that is that one that is already researched quite a lot, so these typical kind of calls, uh, does anybody have an idea for a new product or, or a service? Um, there it's been found that the motivations of people to participate in that differ very, very much. So you have uh, all sorts of motivations that come in there and it is really important to understand first what your crowd is interested in and you can see that then from the papers what, what is sort of for which kind of crowd more likely to be a driver um, to understand that. Um, 
incentives can have both negative and positive eff eff effects and sometimes you need to be careful, especially when it comes to monetary rewards or leaderboards. Uh, it can sometimes backfire also and um, uh, it's not so uh, easy then. It's important to invite the crowd with a very simple uh, formulation of the task so uh, that hopefully many people can contribute and you really end up with broad idea generation. Um, uh, yeah, pre-selection involving the crowd has um, also been tried. You need to be careful. The crowd tends to uh, favor things that are not likely to be so innovative. So that is something that at least the idea seeker or the knowledge seeker needs to have in mind. Quick feedback, that is, I think, something that you found also in your study is very important, that the crowd feels, okay, uh, the, the, the seeker cares about what we do here. Um, yeah, and um, it, it is questionable to which account, uh, which, which is, which, to which extent it makes sense to um, involve the same contributors over and over again, especially after they've been successful. Quite often that leads to even more ideas of the same, but not necessarily to broad idea generation. Yeah, and finally, um, area D, there the insights are really still uh, limited. Um, I think the, at, the, at the VU there, you're, you're sort of starting on that, so that's a very interesting uh, activity coming along. Especially motivations here, it's um, uh, not much really uh, you know about that. Uh, what is important uh, to encourage, um, yeah, open and transparent dialogue and controversial discussion. Okay, well, it's kind of uh, logical, but how you do it is again something that is uh, not so clear. Um, providing an easy to grasp introduction uh, to the often wicked problem. There's one study that tried gamification even for that. That could be a way to integrate people there, but that is also still very limited. Yeah, and then there are mainly core findings are, yeah, what are the elements? Um, uh, it's important to invite many people from, from various backgrounds to integrate the different perspectives. We'll hear something on that in a minute. That's uh, great. Um, sharing of different perspectives, um, it needs to be enabled. Um, and then hopefully to sort of have some integration of these uh, results. But as I said, these are four studies, mainly case studies, and still very, very open. Um, so there is still a lot of research that can be done to how uh, this uh, could, could work. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks.